into it. Uh, go ahead and pull out uh, Jingle Bells 2018. Let's go ahead and do our, our look at everything, first of all. So this is funny. Uh, here we go. Starting with the first measure. We are in DAD tuning. It doesn't say specifically that in the tab, but uh, we are in DAD tuning for Jingle Bells. And uh, our key signature, we have two sharps on the staff there, F sharp and C sharp. We are in the key of D major. You will see that we're starting with a G chord, but we are playing the refrain, or the tag, rather, to the chorus before getting into the tune, and that's why you see it first. But uh, the, the tune in earnest starts at measure 5, and there you can see we have a D major chord to lead things off. So we are in 4-4 four, four time. Four beats in the measure, the quarter note gets the beat. And then we take a look at our navigation, and right off the bat you can see that we've got a little bit going on here. Uh, we have a first ending right there at measure uh, number eight. And I just noticed, uh, okay, and then we've got repeat symbols at measure number five and measure number 12. Start at measure five. We're going to play through the first ending which we can only go in one time. It's a gate you can only enter one time each time you pass through a tune. Anytime you see a first and second ending like that. And that repeat symbol at the very, very beginning of that fifth measure has those two dots there and a double bar, which lets us know that we're going to find another two dots like that at the end of a bar. And everything in between those two bars are going to be played one time through paying very close attention to the first and second endings. So we start from measure five. We have our repeat symbols. We play through measure one, uh, through uh, the first ending. We go all the way down until we reach those double repeat symbols at the end of the measure there, at measure 12. That means we then go back to measure five and play five, six, and seven. But we don't go to measure eight. We don't go back into that first ending. We can't. We've already gone into it, which means we then, right there at measure 7 at the end, we skip from what would be the first ending to the second ending. That's measure 13. So we're going to skip right to measure 13 from that point. That's the navigation. And that saves us a bit of a page turn because we're repeating a section of the tune. So once we get into that second ending, which is the last measure on page one, it, it does appear that I've left out a couple of positioning dots because we do have them to wrap up at measure 25. We got our first, second ending. There's our first ending. There's our second ending. So basically, the repeat is right on. Actually, I believe it's right there at measure. Letter B. Eight. Hang on a second. Don't confuse me. Measure 18 um, is the beginning of the B section. So we get down to measure one. Uh, it is indeed. Uh, measure 18, where you see the B and the, and the downbeat is zero, zero, 002. Measure 18, B section. That is going to be the opening of your double dots. That's where you go back to after you reach measure number 25. Once we get into the first ending over here, there's measure 24, there's measure 25, there's our double dots, and then we're going to take that right back 
over to measure 18. And then when we play from measure 18, we're going to come all the way down through all this. But we're going to stop right here and not go here. Instead, we're going to go right here to the second ending at measure number 26. And that ends the tune right there. All right, does somebody have a question out there? Or or did I <laughs> or did I answer that question? That's where the dots go, right there. And uh, just to cuz I've put so much chicken scratch up here on the screen. Your dots are at the beginning of this me measure number 18. So after we go through the first page and we make our way across this way, we'll play through. We'll get down here into our first ending, which is going to end pretty quickly right there at measure number 25. When we hit that 1, 2, 4, A major chord, blah, we're going to come right on back to measure number 18 and play the 002. That's the, that's the chorus. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way in the B section. So luckily it's, it's labeled B and it doesn't have the repeat symbols, but you may want to write, make a little marks down there with your repeat symbols right there at the beginning of the measure. So to glimpse, that you know that when you leave this point, you will end up at that point. But when you come back from this point, you'll only go as far as the end of this measure right there. But you won't go back into the first ending because we already played it once. You will start from the second ending and then play two measures until you get to the end of the piece. And then you can repeat the song as much as you want. Now, because I was a, a lazy brain and, and didn't tab that out correctly, are there any questions about the navigation? That uh, Hopefully I cleared that up, but any, any questions about having, having to move through the piece? All right, I'm going to erase these, and then I'm going to go back to uh, the beginning over here. All right, let me walk through uh, very basically, like I did before with the other piece, and then I'll do a camera on view so you can see what my fingers are doing for Jingle Bells. I love this song. I, I didn't realize the real words of the song until much later in life. We only hear some of those words. We don't hear all the, the lyrics. It's hysterical. It's, 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 it's a smart and funny little piece of music. But we also are doing a lot of partial stuff going on here, like we've done in some of the songs here uh, during the month. Take notice, first of all, of this partial 3-1 happening in the first measure. That's part of the secret to uh, chord melody. We're often playing chords with melody on top as the highest pitched number. But sometimes the melody needs to come across from the melody string to the middle string and sometimes even to the bass string. And when that happens, we don't want to play anything higher pitched than the melody because that melody will then get buried in a sandwich of sound. So what's happening at the very beginning of this piece is our melody note even though it's a refrain, is happening on the first fret on the middle string. And wherever you see something on the top string and something on the middle string, but nothing on the melody string, that bottom string, that means that the melody is on the lowest number you can see. So in measure 5, the melody is on the middle string. On measure 6, the melody is on the middle string until that melody drops down to that bottom line there. 
So you have to preserve that by doing a partial strum and don't strum all the way across the strings or you will bury the melody. So that opening bit there would be you could put your fingers down three on three, but just don't pluck three when you first come in. You got a quarter note. You got four quarter notes in that first measure. If you play three one as a quarter note partial chord, you've got a root note for your chord, you got a melody note on the middle string, and your next melody note is on the melody string on the seat. And then use your thumb to walk down the two and the one. And actually that would, for me, would be uh, thumb on the three, thumb on two, and a pinky catching the one. And I will show you how that works in the overhead camera. But... get us into measure number five. So those partial ones, just be aware of those and don't strum the melody string to keep from burying the melody with additional drones going on. Coming from the very, very beginning, we get that three, one. Into a one, two, four, we love that chord. Coming up to a four, four, five. Four is already covered by the middle string, and then open strum on the downbeat of measure four, and then walk down. Another little bass here, just to kind of keep things moving without messing around with our melody. And then we get into our A part, measure five. Gonna strum inward as far as the middle string. First ink, two, three, four. Sorry. Two, three. Now measure ten. Four, two. That's a partial four, two, one chord. We don't have to hit the one. Aren't you happy? But hold on to that four, two, and just strum in from four to two, and let your pick rest against the melody string, and don't go any further. And you'll be able to nail that without it being too much of a problem. Coming from measure nine. Sorry. Two, three, four. Then bring my thumb up to the fourth fret. Thumb down to three. Pinky to one. And then whatever wants to grab it can grab it at two. Two, three, repeat. That repeat takes us back to measure five. Two, three. Two, three, four. Now, we're at measure two, so we're gonna go ahead and make that switch. Oh, no, I have to take that off of there first, and then do this. All right, and then measure 14. Quick switch into one, two, four. Come up into our four, four, five. I use my ring finger again, barring at the fourth fret. Ring finger goes down to the third fret. Four is already covered by the middle finger in this case. And then open zero, zero, zero. And then that's a half note. So we were there for two beats. One, two, four. Full A major chord. That takes us into the beginning of the repeat. Remember, there are repeat symbols at the beginning of part right here in measure 18. Here's our repeat symbols. It's going to take us back to the B section.
And then when we take those last two eighth notes in measure 23, we're going to go right to the second ending at measure number six. And that takes us back to the beginning. Let me go ahead and stop sharing and show you what my fingers are doing here on the C, uh, on the dulcimer. Starting from the very, very beginning. So our 310 chords that we play, G major, that'd be going all the way across the uh, strings there. Let me tune up real quick. Hang on. The middle strings. Suspect. It's sus. The middle string is sus. I've been reading too much Reddit. Okay, uh, so 310 would be a G major chord for us. But we're not playing all the way across. We're just strumming inwards to the, th to the, the middle string. We're going to use our thumb at the third fret to pick up the second beat there. Thumb comes down to two. Ring finger, or, or pinky, hanging out down here, is going to grab that one. And then I'm going to switch my configuration, my grip, and get a one, two, four, and ride with my melody. So watch the transition from the first measure to the second measure. I want you to be able to see that ring, uh, that pinky finger. Why do I keep calling it my ring finger? Watch the pinky finger come into play. A lot of people don't use their pinky finger. It is such a great help. It is a great assistant. If you're trying to hold down these three strings and keep that, that sustain going, it can help you to get additional footing, you know, or fingering, <laughs> whatever. But you got to get used to using it. you got to get used to throwing it in there. So let me do it real slow again. And just see how I just float it in there. And from there, I changed my grip completely from this to that. Middle note is already covered by our four, four, five, and then open. I reached down to grab that note with my pinky, I actually slid it up and played the 002. I would normally play the 002 with my index finger or my thumb or a stronger finger, but the problem is that I'm trying to hold down a lot of other stuff. I've got this 424 going on. So I'm trying to hold on to the A, which is the root note. I'm trying to hold on to the C sharp here on the middle string. My pinky's already there at the first fret. It's the closest thing on the same string as the next note, which is a two on the, on the melody string. And everything else can go away. So I literally am using my pinky finger. I'm not gonna switch to a stronger finger. I'm gonna pull that pinky finger up from one and release everything else, bring it up to two and do my zero, zero, two. It ain't always comfortable, but if you don't use your pinky, it's never going to get strong, and it's never going to be good for you. So you do have to sometimes lean on it. Let me do that again. Coming from measure, coming from the A part, measure five. Only going as far as that middle string. 
four two four. Pinky goes down to the one, and I let go of everything else and slide the pinky from one to two. Two, three, repeat. Two, three. Two, three. We're now in uh, the second ending. So measure 14. And then we go into our one, two, four. Four is already covered on the middle string by our four, four, five. We are of our wide open zero, zero, zero. Then to our one, two, four. And then our B section. our second ending and that is the routing for walking through jingle bells and there's all kinds of fun stuff you can do with it timing wise energy wise you know the whole bit you know The very, very basics there of Jingle Bells, and I don't know if anybody's ever heard the lyrics, all the lyrics to this tune, but the last measure is, um, a day or two ago, the story I must tell, I went out on the snow, and on my back I fell, a gent went riding by, in a white horse open sleigh. He laughed as there I sprawling lie and quickly drove away. <laughs> I thought, what? There's like, there's so much torment in, uh, in the Jingle Bells tune. And um, I, it was written by a pastor from, I believe it was South Carolina. Uh, not that old of a tune, but it's become quickly one of the great Christmas classics and uh, a fa fabulous, fabulous song. And if you find the song with the original lyrics... Um, it can be a little quizzical. In fact, that was the second verse. The last verse is, uh, so, um, oh gosh, go out while you're young, take the sleigh tonight and sing the slang song. Just get a bobtail neigh to 40 at his, as his speed and hitch him to an open sleigh and crack, you'll take the lead. So apparently there was some like drag racing going on with horses and jingle bells at that point in South Carolina, where they don't have snow, so I'm really confused about that whole thing. Um, any questions on Jingle Bells, 
and the approach to playing Jingle Bells. Very, very, again, very basic with just the melody, with the uh, some of the chords, and nothing fancy going on here rhythmic-wise. There are a lot of things you can do to bring this thing alive. But uh, And if you decide to play this sometime in the next month or so for whoever you might be playing for, I have some additional tips and tricks. I'll show you one thing real quick. I'll show you this. This is kind of fun. So, uh, So it's that alternating uh, bass line, because all we're doing is playing with an open drone on the Jingle Bells part. You're not doing a whole bunch there, which allows you to get a little fancy and do a little bit of a pendulum bass at the, f at the fourth fret. What we're doing is we're playing D bass and then playing A, the fifth of the D major chord. Which is always going to give you a really cool country and western bass sound if you want to play in the key of D. Uh, under a D major chord is played D and A. The first and the fifth, the root and the fifth of any chord is going to give you a nice solid uh, bass sound for any of those chords. So if you're playing a G chord, you'd play G and D. If you're playing an A major chord, you'd play A and E. Or A and, yeah, A and E. Play the, the root and the fifth, the first and the fifth of any chord. That's going to give you, and whether you go from the root up to the fifth or the root down to the fifth, it's still going to give you an awesome, solid, dependable bass sound for whatever song you want to play. So in this case, uh, we're just going open D to A. So when we do the Jingle Bells part, we're really hanging out in one spot. So here. So until you start moving, you can alternate. If you use a different finger, and I'm using my uh, middle finger, on the second fret, you can use your thumb to hit that fourth fret A and alternate and bring in a little bass note. You'll get to do it exactly two times before you have to start thinking about other stuff. But you, just those two times will give you enough flavor of motion that you can come back to it later and pick it up. Once you establish a motif, you don't actually have to keep doing it. Just enough to put it in the minds of people and then do something different. That's sort of the black magic trickery of music, you know, so... I'm doing with the uh, one and a half fret there for those of you who do have it I'm doing a D7 and that's with the one and a half fret coming down from two to your one and a half on the middle string and you put that in just very very briefly if you've got the one and a half fret careful not to try and hit that melody string again, but do hit the middle string where that uh, C dominant 7th is.
that ending was basically just coming from A to G to A and D. For a tidy little ending of Jingle Bells. Any questions on the arrangement for Jingle Bells? Or any of the stuff that goes with Jingle Bells? Well, I am thinking that you guys are so ready to go out and would next month and play not only the songs we learned this uh, month, but also songs that you've been working on maybe for the rest of the year, other songs you uh, relearning from last year, and whatever you might be doing, oh my gosh, you are all going to have so much fun playing for people this year. Uh, people are looking for us to do that. Things are going to be very strange. This is going to be the strangest Christmas that we've had in a very, very long time. And I always thought that when things got weird in the world, the one saving grace that we would all have would be music. Thank you. I want you guys to have a merry holiday season. God, we started early, didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ken. Happy don't, Halloween. Happy Halloween to you guys. Happy Thanksgiving. Merry Christmas and season's greetings to you all. I'll see you guys very soon. God bless you all. Stay safe out there, all right? And you, to you, too. Thank you. This has been a blast. Thank you. <laughs>